Welcome back to John's Films. You know you've got a good friend when they loan you their new Nikon Z9. And that's what happened for me. Now this Z9, I've got a 50 mil f1.2 lens on and it shoots 8K video. So you know, I had to start with 8K video, meaning I can zoom in this far and still have one-to-one -one pixel resolution. Today, I'm going to accomplish two things. The first, shoot some B-roll, understand what the footage looks like, see what settings tend to work best for it, and then two, see how well it plays back on my computer. I was incredibly excited to get into video on these cameras and I started shooting every format possible. I ended up landing on these two, 4K ProRes 422 and 8K H.265420, which you have to realize is using the same sensor, we're capturing the same base data. It then gets demosaicked into the codec that is recording for. But each of the demosaicing as they translate them into ProRes or into H.265 can deal with a different amount of data. So in the 4K side, we're dealing with what's known as pixel binning or dropping off of pixels. On the 8K side, we're dealing with 8K footage, which has later been downsampled in DaVinci Resolve to 4K footage to show me in my timeline. This can produce a couple of different results. And it's not necessarily the capabilities of the camera that are different when it comes to capturing the light, but it's how we're storing the data that gives us a little bit of differences. You can see as I apply a grade to it that we start to see some difference. For one, I know that this is gorgeous footage as it should be when you've got 10 grand sitting in your hand. But if we really get picky, and I'm talking picky, we can start to see, for me, I see a lot of horizontal noise. It has a characteristic to it here in the ProRes footage. And coming over here to the 8K footage, which Resolve, remember, has scaled I see it as well, but it actually, it seems to be better distributed on the vertical. Now that's just me. I think plenty of people will probably disagree with it and say, no, it looks the same or it's gorgeous or it's worse here, it's better there. I don't know. I like the, the aesthetic that I get out of just the amount of detail, the color. And frankly, I'm shooting here with a 50 mil F1.2 lens. Uh, you can't beat this. Both of these are gorgeous. It depends probably on what you're going to end up showing it as or if you'd like to use 8K for a crop. But for me, I would shoot 8K H.265 in a 420 setup because I like the ability to dynamically scale. In post verse, what's recorded by the camera here is 4K ProRes, and that really takes away the ability for you to crop and scale. The next thing I tested was autofocus. And while I doubt they really were thinking chickens when it came to animals, I'm really impressed every time you see the chicken eyeball, the focus locks in. And I intentionally used the default settings, turned on animal autofocus, and said go. And frankly, it was impressive. Each time that it's functioning, it pops a little white box around their eyeball. Here I'm a little bit further away and I wanted to see how well it would do. Sure enough, sticks to it pretty well. You can see it started to search focus as the chicken looked down and you kind of lost the idea of the head or the eyeball. It started to search and it pulled forward a little bit. You can see now the depth of field, but I'm also shooting at wide open F12 uh, here at 50 mil. And as the chicken turns its head away, you tend to lose it as well. But whenever you get the eyeball actually shown, like here, it tends to pick it up pretty darn well. On the performance side, I got a pleasant surprise. Even the 8K footage plays back pretty darn cleanly. And here, of course, I've got an 8K footage on the right and the ProRes that it's playing back. What's really interesting is I actually have two copies of each because I just used a simple slider to throw this over. And so I'm playing back two of these and two of these on my RTX 3090 and 5950X based system. If I really want to bring the pain, I'm going to step over to my 4K footage I've shot at 120 frames per second. I've then color graded this and slowed it down at 20%, yielding 24 frames per second footage. What you'll notice is, due to the large dynamic range here, I had to crank the ISO up and I have some noise stuck here in the footage. Hmm, alright. Well, I can clean that up, and frankly, if I'm just recording, it's clean. It's even got that color grade on it. But if I add in, and I'm going to do it here, just Control-D will reactivate that node, noise reduction, 
to get the noise out of the footage. And by the way, Resolve does a phenomenal job of it. Check this out. It's painful though. I mean, this thing's chugging. And so I have to play over it a few times with my playback render cache turned on. Now it's smooth and I don't have the noise sitting in the shadows like I did, but it is chugging. So you do have to realize what you're doing to your computer when you try and play this back. And you can notice here Resolve is optimized and got all of the CUDA cores cranked up and doing noise reduction for us. Wrapping it up, frankly, what did we learn? We learned that this camera is a beast. I've never shot on a five, $6,000 flagship this extensively, and I couldn't believe the performance. The eye autofocus, the codecs that are available to me, I believe that the 4K 120 footage on my A7S III looks a little bit better. I think that the 8K footage off of this thing, though, is gorgeous. I gotta say, due to my investment in glass, when Sony comes out with another top-of-the-line flagship, I'm gonna be really hard-pressed not to start saving my pennies. Thanks for watching, and hope you have a great day.